Welcome back everyone to another Kerbal Space Program video and today's Kerbal Space Program video I'm going to be starting a base on the Mun. So uh, you might know that I started a base on Duna a while back and uh, the style that I did for, did for that is I kind of attached all of the separate modules while I was in orbit but for this one I want to kind of do it in sections so today I'm gonna send up the core and then I'm going to end up sending different modules at different times, you know, like whenever I need a video idea, I can just use this uh, base as something to do. Um, so yeah, so anyway, so right now I'm constructing the, um, the base and I went through a couple different designs for it, but this is the one that I ended up liking the most. Uh, one of the most challenging parts was figuring out the sky crane because for some reason the center of mass and the center of thrust overlays were not working well and as soon as I would try and activate the sky crane uh, to land on the MUN, it would kind of just spin out of control for some reason. So the design I ended up going for in the end is a bit different where I have, uh, I think I used air spike engines and they're attached uh, eight, eight of them around with fuel tanks. And that way we can keep the um, all the center of thrust and the center of mass really close together so that there's not too much, um, you know, there's not there's nothing really off center. So yeah, you might have noticed that cut there and that's because this was about like an hour and a half into the process where I realized that that first method wasn't going to work. So I kind of cut so you could see the construction of the base and then uh, switched it back to here so you could see how the final product came. Uh, and yeah, so I'm just adding some RCS there so we can have some control and then I put some reaction wheels inside so that we can have some even more control because this thing is kind of hard to, you know, maneuver because those air spike engines don't have any um, thrust vectoring. So we're completely reliant on either RCS or reaction wheels. Here I'm building up the fairing. I was going to go with the 5 meter diameter fairings. But then I was like, you know what, this is probably too big and very overpowered, and I want to make this as efficient as possible. So I ended up going back and switching it to the 3.75 meter diameter part, uh, just to, you know, because because the fairing fit, I didn't think it would fit initially. So um, I, I think I go back to that. I might be wrong, though. Uh, I can't remember if that was in the first design. Yes, I'm 90% sure that I'm wrong, and that I actually stuck with this size for the fairing. <laughs> That's my bad. But yeah, anyways, here I'm going to, I, I just switched out to see if the Rhino would act, would give us any more Delta V, but it ended up giving us less because thrust to weight ratio was too much for the uh, size of the rocket. But yeah, now we can just start the launch. Uh, nothing too crazy, standard ascent profile, trying to get to uh, uh, 45 degrees on the nav ball by the time we get to 10 kilometers. And getting into an 80 kilometer orbit, nothing too crazy. Um, one thing that I do want to do that actually corresponds with this base is that I, w I want to send a um, or kind of satellite into orbit around the Mun, and I wanted to do that with an SSTO. So that's going to be like a future video that I want to do. So it might take me a little while to get that video out because I've never really done SSTOs before, and I need to practice them before I can actually commit to doing a video on one. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a a subject for later. You'll see why it's relevant later in the video. But now we raised our apoapsis up to 80 kilometers and then we can deploy our fairing right here and then get ready to get ourselves into an orbit around uh, Kerbin. So we're just burning here with those engines. Uh, I believe we used uh, those were mastodon engines in that second and first stage and now we're just using that main sail just to get us the rest of the way into orbit. Uh, another upside to having the um, the outer or the sky crane engines really attached to the um, core itself is number one we can maneuver like if we ever needed to move the surface base we could move everything um, you know independently like we could just undock and move it but number two um, it makes doing burns much easier so I can actually use the engines on the core as its own stage so uh, you'll see that I've run out of fuel in the main sail which that's according to plan I didn't really uh, want to keep that all the way into um, our MUN orbit but while trying to get our MUN encounter or while burning for our MUN encounter um, I ended up using up all that fuel in that stage which like I said that's completely fine and then I ended up burning with the um, aero spike engines so here we go we're, um, we're just burning the last bits of fuel in that stage and then 
we can decouple right now and then burn with those arrow spike engines. For, um, I'm pretty sure this is because that there's no uh, thrust vectoring, but the air spike, or when I'm burning with the air spike engines, the whole core kind of just likes to rotate itself, like in a roll, and I can't really seem to fix it. I mean, I could use RCS to do it, but the problem with RCS is it throws off your like orbit sometimes. So if you're like, especially if you've done dockings before, you'll notice that when trying to to um, face the direction of the docking port, let's say, with RCS, it'll mess up your orbit because it's actually increasing speed and taking away speed from your craft in certain areas. It's a very, it's very little. It's like maybe I, I don't know. It's very little, but you know, it's still something. So I just rather not use the RCS when I have to. I do end up using them in the landing because our landing site doesn't have to be too precise uh, for the core. But you know, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of explaining why I didn't use RCS there. Uh, but yeah, now we can kind of just time warp to our maneuver node. I always like to aim to land on the day side of the MUN, uh, especially if I don't have lights that can like point down. So, like sometimes I'll add lights underneath the craft, usually with landers. Uh, I can do that because the landing legs raise them off, but with the surface base, we need the bottom of the craft to be completely flat. Uh, yeah, so right now, just trying to get ourselves on a nice, slow touchdown. I end up landing, I think, with like 98 meters per second of fuel left. Um, and I was trying to get us landing right near Crater because eventually I want to send up a, a like a huge rover for this base. But and, and I think it'd be cool. I like I like to go inside craters because it's it's pretty challenging to make them a good size and then have enough power to drive up the crater walls. But I ended up landing um, right next to the crater, like a little, a little too close to the crater, and that ended up having our base land on a slant and this is where that kind of uh, scanner satellite comes into play because in a video that I'm going to do in the future I'm going to send up a refueler but um, I need to find a place to drill for ore so you know we need to obviously send up an ore scanner before we can do that uh, so yeah so this is not the final resting place of the MUN base uh, that's why you'll you'll see I don't plant a flag. I just wanted to get this Kerbal out for EVA so I could take a screenshot. But uh, yeah, so now we can just get this Kerbal back in the base. And I could have moved it over because we did have some remaining fuel, but I didn't want to risk it. Um, but yeah, that's the entire video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you enjoyed it, leave a like. And if you've enjoyed what I've what I've made so far, you know, consider subscribing. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. I think by the time I'm uploading this, we're, we've like just hit 40 subscribers, so that's a pretty decent milestone. Uh, but yeah, I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.